Hello homo sapiens and welcome to episode 2 of 1.5 RimWorld. So we're going to try to survive and beat the game here with the new beta, uh, which is a prelogue to the DLC, which is Anomaly. So, where we left off, we had just killed a raider. And we're going to put her skull on a skull spike. But the main base is the main focus, I want that up. But yeah, other than that, Silver is recovering from the raid. So I guess she will rest for now, but I need to get a spike trap up. Come on, Silver. Oh well, her spine is fully healed. And yeah, she's just resting. I don't think she needs to prioritize this right now. I would rather you go and work. Yeah, some food. I also noticed, but baby trees have a new texture. Uh, I swear, they look way different, way smaller. Yeah. And food, we need some food. So, we could become a mechanoid or a mechanitor this playthrough, but I'm not sure. Uh, mechanoids... Uh, no, no, no. I don't think I need them. Uh, not, not this playthrough. But they would be nice. I mean, mechanoids are always nice. Better than humans. Maybe getting sidecasts, because I haven't really used sidecasts that often. So yeah, sidecast playthrough, since we have the anima tree right there. That would be amazing. Silver is fully healed. Now she can work on the base. I'm actually going to plan it out. The question is, do I want to make it out of wood for now? No, no I should make it out of marble, so I will queue up a stonecutter's table. Forbid that until we need it. So we, let, we will let Silver finish growing the rice. And yeah, I start cutting up some stone blocks. I am still in the middle of researching batteries because I need power as well. So a lot to do. Yeah, Silver only has three implants. Oh, that's going to take so long to level up. So slow. I will need to recruit someone. If only this raider here wasn't a waster, then we could already have a second colonist. Anyways, other than that... Very relaxing with Phoebe Chillax. Uh, I'm not sure how she operates, but so far... Uh, even though we are on 500%, it is quite relaxing. Need to grow some more rice. But yeah, other than that, the new DLC so far... It looks pretty good. There will be more uh, more announcements on it in the future. But from what I've seen, there is a new end game. And the DLC itself is like um, the Mechanitor with Biotech. You can choose to get it or to activate the content or not. So for the first few playthroughs, we will probably activate it. And uh, if not, then we'll see if there is a lot of content outside of the, the main horror theme. It is something uh, along the lines of shows like The Thing. So apparently one of your colonists will be infected and you have to try to figure out who the infected is. So like uh, Among Us in RimWorld. <laughs> we will see, we will simply see. Hmm. We are on day number 7, so the first week here in RimWorld. I wouldn't say it's going too bad. Silver is happy. 
I need to get 30 steel for the stonecutter's table. Only one batch, I would say. There we go. And I wanted to chop down some more trees. Plant cut. But yeah, I'm going to look at some other things that 1.5 brings, which is what we're playing on. So, crawling. <laughs> that one is the, the thing that excites me the most, apparently. So it says here that when downed, humans still capable of manipulation can now crawl on the ground instead of being fully incapacitated. So that means that they will crawl away from fire. If there is a raid and one of your colonists gets downed, and they will look for the nearest hospital bed or just a normal wooden bed. <clears throat> so that could be quite handy. Especially if your medic gets downed or uh, if a bunch of your pawns get downed, then they can crawl towards a bed so you don't have to rescue them. Because that takes a lot of time and time is everything in a raid. And there is a new mode. When the game is over, when all of your pawns are dead, then you can apparently choose to uh, continue the colony with one to six wanderers. So, I mean, that is something for non-hardcore players. If you're on commitment mode, and technically it's not for you, but... Maybe we can test it out, but of course, I will not die. <laughs> I am too good at the game. But it is entirely optional, so you can decide to quit when the colony dies, or you can continue it. Uh, there was a mod for that. <laughs> There's a mod for everything that uh, 1.5 adds, but it's good having these things in the base game, because it improves, uh, improves the performance. And removes the need to download the mods. Go through each and every mod. Because I do play with Vanilla Rimworld. But Vanilla Rimworld for me is still 40 quality of life mods. So now it's only going to go down to 20. <laughs> and the art has been improved as well. So apparently now some, some textures have been changed. To the ones from the vanilla expanded art, which I've noticed. Not all of them, but just some. It looks much cleaner, which is great. Anyways, have a lot of resources, have a lot of food, so it's time to start constructing the house. Our grand mansion. I will need you to do stone cutting for now, silver. So no mining. Perfect, perfect. So we're going to plan this out then. A 13 by 13 shack. And then we want... Yeah, we could go for a double door, but you have to construct it with 50 gold. Um, which is very expensive, actually. I would also like to research batteries once the, the base is done. And then we can get a wind turbine. Where do I place this down? I think we have our power section right here. Because there's a steam geyser here. So we have the base. We will expand the base up upwards here. And then a little compound. Just for power. Like this. You don't have to work on that now, Silver. You just cut up some blocks. I'm going to need a shelf now, though, since we have no space. Absolutely no space in the base. Get some... Where is it? 
There we go. Small shelves. One, two. But yeah, how often will Phoebe raid us or send us a major event? I believe I read somewhere that she's like Cassandra. Except Cassandra sends about two major events every 11 days. So there would be like one and then two major events and then wait 11 days. And then there will be two major events. But with Phoebe, I think it's only one major event every, every 11 days. So I think that's why she gets the name Phoebe Chillax. She is half as difficult as Cassandra. But I might be wrong. If I die in this playthrough, then I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I'm used to playing Randy Random, and sometimes Randy can be more difficult than Cassandra. Sometimes he will send five raids in a week. And sometimes he will relax for a month. Another interesting thing with 1.5 is that mechanoids can now emerge from bodies of water to attack your colony. So I have no idea what that means, like from the ocean or just from any source of water. Because that means that I will have to build a wall around here or build some turrets. <laughs> they can emerge from the water. And uh, you can also get mechanoid slag chunks. Uh, okay, this is different from the water. Certain large mechanoids have a chance to drop a mechanoid slag chunk. When they're broken down, these act like steel slag chunks and can be smelted down for steel. Okay. But as I said, this playthrough, I'm thinking of going with the biotech's children route simply because of the books now I believe you don't have a research for books bookcase, yeah, I mean that's not the books so books I believe can only be acquired through trading or through quests so thank god we have a lot of settlements here with books because knowledge is power imagine having our kids, you know we won't put them in the... <laughs> I said this in the last episode, but we won't put them in the, what is it, the vat grow thing. We'll just have them read until they're 13, and then they will have 20 in every skill <laughs> when they're an adult. And so you get these godly children that have just read, they haven't played, they're just OP. So how many stone blocks do I need? Uh, 320, 42, 44, 44 times 5 is 220. So we have enough stone blocks for now. I can finish that one up silver. Do not want to waste any labor. And just like so, he will work on the base in the morning. Do I need another spike trap? Maybe I should just get one more spike trap, just for security reasons. And I think I'll make it out of steel, because silver is trash at planting, but she's better at mining. And I believe the steel spike trap deals the most damage out of all of them. Trap melee damage. I think they fixed this as well. So in five hits... Okay, it deals five hits uh, in one... Uh, when you walk over it uh, to five different body parts, I believe. Or it could be the same body part. So base value is 100 damage. And this one also has 100 damage, but because it's wood, it's only 40%. So it only deals 8 damage. This one deals 20 damage across five hits. Interesting. And stone blocks, I think, are worse than steel spike traps. 
yeah, as you can see, 12. So steel spike traps are the way to go if you're going to do that. Yeah, maybe steel is just sharper. But now, silver, you have enough food still. I'm going to need you to haul. And in this base here, I'm going to queue up some recreational items, like a wooden chest table. What else do I want in here? I want the lamp, the wall lamp. Yeah, the wall lamp won't be necessary with this base design, actually. But it will be useful in some other bases. But if we're going for um, a 13x13 13 13 base like this... Then a standard standing lamp will suffice. The wall lamp costs 5 less steel, but provides the same amount of light. Or one less light uh, radius, yeah. What else do we want in the base here? An end table is important. And a wooden dresser, because these increase the comfort of the bed. Mm, sweaty, 28 Celsius. Yeah, we won't need a passive cooler. It's going to be winter soon, actually. In about 20 days. So, the plan is just to hunt. There should be enough animals for us to eat. And we will see some snow. And we will celebrate Christmas, since we have the Christmas tree here. They've also changed the textures of the of a building under construction it looks more polished i would say yeah definitely there's definitely a change there i'm going to edit some of these things here as well like drugs and there's a new reading policy here you can choose which books to read so, for example, if you want a kid to be good at crafting, you would just uh, delete all of these. Just put, uh, put all of them at X, and then you would only tick on the crafting book here. So that is quite neat. Allow books which advance research. You, can, <laughs> you don't even need research benches, you can just get books and read the books to research the colony further. So as I said, we will have these uh, children's slaves do reading for us. They will be researching for us. Now kids cannot research until they're 13. But a 13 in RimWorld is an adult technically. So we will just have kids research for us. We'll have like five of them. That is the plan for this playthrough. But the base is halfway done so far. Uh, we need more food, but the next batch of rice is here. We haven't gotten a single quest so far. And we haven't gotten a, a wanderer quest. A random wanderer because I could use some colony uh, colonists right now. I could use some some new pawns because things are quite slow when you only have silver. Ah, oh, silver got level four in construction. I remember because she couldn't make a dining chair; she had to make a stool. But now we can make a chair, place that down somewhere. We, we want to move everything. 
We want to move the butcher's table, the chair or the table right there. We want to move the urn. We essentially want to take apart this space right here and just move it. Just need a bit more steel though. So I'm going to have to mine out this batch right here. How many steam gazers do we have nearby? Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Steam gazer. No, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it right. How many of those do we have? Only one nearby. Okay, we have this one, this one, and this one. So getting geothermal power wouldn't be too bad, actually. Yeah, I should get that in the mid game. Because they are essentially free power. They don't have downtime like a wind turbine when there's no wind or a solar generator when the sun goes down. We can deconstruct this torch here and move our, all of our production items in here. Move the shelves. And I'm going to have to move the spike traps. Defenses are important. Oh, transport crash. A brawler Edakin. Social construction cooking. Could become a cook. Now the question is can I take them on? Hmm. The only question is if we have enough food, and I think we have enough food. Yeah, let's uh, let's try to capture them. Come on, silver, you're starving. Just eat some food and tend to them. I mean, it depends on the amount of resistance that they have. So anything above 20 is bad. That will take too long. Anything about tw above 20. And we also have to convert them. But the good thing is that more people means less chance of us dying. I guess our old shack can become a prisoner room, so I guess we can keep it keep it alive. We won't deconstruct it. Let's see here. Oh, I said above 20 is bad, so 19 is quite good. I think for now we will just reduce the resistance. Or maybe we convert them first, yeah. Let's just convert them. Any good gear? Yeah, they have some good gear. And Idakin actually like being naked. They have the naked speed here. So they shouldn't... You know, they don't feel bad about being naked. But I will have to... Get silver a new bed now. Oh, you still need to sleep, silver. You will you were tending all night to the new prisoner. Get some more steel now, please. I will need so much more food now, though. 
Or Idakin, yeah, they consume 25% more food than a regular human. Which is uh, quite bad. Hmm. We'll have to grow some more rice. Oh no. They got an infection in their left arm. This is actually horrible because Silver only has two in medical. I don't think we can keep them alive actually, even with medicine. And do I really want to amputate them? Yeah, I'm going to have to try to amputate it and if it doesn't work... Uh, I don't know. And even then, they will only operate at 50% efficiency. We only have one herbal medicine. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. That really is unfortunate. 44% is not too shabby. We will clean the room. Yeah, I don't want to have to waste some more food, so if it doesn't go well with the infection, we have to execute them or uh, or release them. That is unfortunate, but we can get better recruits, right? A group of visitors. Okay. <laughs> He got a second infection, so I think it's over. I think it's over. We will just... Ah, uh, do I keep this smoke leaf? I mean, the smoke leaf could be good in case we get sad, so... We will smoke that Zaza. Yeah, we will have to... Um, we will have to execute him, unfortunately. There's no way we can keep him alive. In the torso as well. It is sad to see. It is sad to see. I could have also released them for three points, but I guess it's all right. What are these? A group of people passing by, tribals, and who are these people from the Civil Outlander Union? I will have to go out and trade a lot with them in the future, as I said for the books. Any books here? Here, Schematic, a book which describes technology and methods for using it. And a textbook. And I would also like to trade with the Empire. Actually, I think I'm going to have to accept honor as a quest reward. Because in the end game, those Empire people sell some of the best stuff. So that's the plan. Do we have... I need you to make the spike trap silver. She's a bit sad now, though. She needs to sleep. Work on the bed, eat some food, and sleep. Yeah, when is the next event, Miss Cassandra? A flame bow. I will definitely be equipping that in the morning. Well, daytime now, so it's time to go back to work. Work, work, work.
I would also like to make a nutrient paste dispenser. Yes, so we don't risk getting food poisoning. Where do we do that? Yeah, we can just place it right here. The nutrient paste dispenser is the best early game structure, that's for sure. The amount of nutrition nutrients that it saves on. I believe nutrient paste um, gives you the same amount of nutrition for less food. So for a simple simple meal, I think it's 10 nutrition, so 10 rice. 10 rice, I believe, to make a simple meal. And for the same amount, it only consumes 6 rice or 8 rice. I'm not sure about the number in a nutrient paste dispenser. So getting this thing up will save you, save you on food and on preventing food poisoning. And as you know, food poisoning wastes a lot of food and a lot of time. All of your needs are done now, so I would like you to actually finish up the base real quick before you continue planting. Yes, put that on number two priority. We really need to construct now. It has been how many days? Okay, the next Phobie Chillax raid or major event should be in literally two days. If she acts similar to Cassandra. But maybe they changed her. Maybe they changed her since I last read about Phobie. Oh, a stone cutter's table. I want that inside. Don't want a raider destroying that. And now we can allow the new base to be constructed. So move everything, get going, Silver. Yeah, I would like to I would like to move everything in here to the left side. Because right here I would like to grow some flowers. A great thing to do if you want to increase the beauty is just to grow flowers. Even though this is a dirt floored base, it is much better to have flowers than a wooden flooring. Because if you have a wooden flooring, I see a lot of new people do this. They make a wooden base and wooden flooring. But you have to spend a lot of time cleaning the dirt on the wooden floor. And the dirt on the wooden floor is dirtier and uglier than a regular dirt base. If you can see here, there is some blood there, that's minus 20. But I believe dirt is like minus 10 or something. So early game, just plant some flowers. And once you're ready to uh, clean the base properly, then you get some marble. Because wood is flammable, you do not want wood in your base. Perfect silver. Work on that door, please. I don't think we've gotten food poisoning so far this playthrough. That is extremely lucky, no? <laughs> no food poisoning. Nah, the baby trees. These trees look much smaller. They look so cute. Nature is beautiful. 
Oh, we got a random rat in here. You're trapped here forever. And that's some free food, actually. I'm actually going to do this. Yes, butcher up if we have under 50 meat. Rat dead. Silver sh short bow arrow obliterated. The rat's liver and body to a fine mist. Yeah, please equip the flame bow silver. Okay, the most important part is that the stone base is up, because then I don't have to worry about forest fires. I remember many of my colonies not dying, but getting extremely traumatized from having to deal with fires constantly. Every time there is a thunderstorm in RimWorld, it will always spread. Always spread. It's, it spreads like half the map. Which is, uh, well, something you have to prepare for. One way you can do that, actually, if you don't want to deal with the fire and you have a wooden base, is just construct a roof like this around the base, because then the plants will die, and then the fire can't actually spread. Anyways, as you can see, everything is coming up. I will get some more steel and components. We had a few ship trunks last episode. We can deconstruct those for component. God damn it, rat. You just wasted 45 of my precious wood. <laughs> Stupid rat. How can you trip on a trap? Maybe there was some uh, cheese on the spike trap. And the rat got curious and just got abso absolutely obliterated. A sharp trap launched at the rat, jabbing into her right lung and body. Jeez, the lung. As you can see, I was just talking about fires. A dry thunderstorm is the worst. Wait, oh my goodness. <laughs> 1.5 actually gives fire light. And darkness seems darker, no? Or maybe it's just because it's a dry thunderstorm. But the night seems more atmospheric. Especially with the fires. Looks quite cool. They've improved the base game a lot with 1.5. So let's see if we can say the same with Anomaly, the new DLC. Come on, Cassandra. Next event. Right around the corner. A uh, rot stink. We do not want that. Please just construct. Thank you, Silver. Ah, Phoebe is sending us some rain. I believe there is some code in the game where if there's a large forest fire, then it will actually guarantee some rain. But for example, if it rains now and the rain just stops and there's another fire, then it will be on a cooldown. So it's not like you can force the fire and then force it to rain and then repeat the cycle. But I guess it's just so the whole map doesn't burn down over and over. As I said, make this a prisoner room. Ah, 
Now, I might want to haul in the rice because rice deteriorates very quickly when it rains. As you can see, minus 30 a day. And rice only has 60 hit points, which means two days and that rice is gone. A great thing with kids is that they can haul and clean for you. So we just need to find a male, a suitable male, preferably with good genes. Wooden chest table for recreation, so silver. You will be quite happy now with this new base. I'm going to plant roses here because they die. Uh, they die uh, less quickly. Which means silver has to spend less time replanting them. But they do give less beauty than daisies. Or daylilies. But the new base is up. So we want to move the stockpile in here. And our wealth has just gone above 10,000. But I still think two spike traps should be enough. Just in case, I'm going to fortify this a bit more. Make a marble door there. After that, I'm going to get some more components. Actually, I'm going to set up... Ooh, they... Uh... Wait, what is this? Ah, they've, uh, they've redesigned this area UI. Oh, this is quite nice, actually. So what I can do here is expand. I would just like to make a general area where the colonists are. Yeah, so they don't wander about doing random things. Just to keep time. Uh, just so they spend less time walking around the map. Work. Yeah. Just stay and work in this area. And if we need to go outside, we need to go outside. Because colonists will randomly go out here. If there's like a transport uh, transport pod, they get something. Or if an animal died here, they will go out and haul that. Haunts don't actually need that big of an area to work with. How much more steel do I need for power? I only have 27. I need 100, 225, 245, 260, 275 steel. So that's a lot. We will have to mine. I guess you have to focus on food as well, but then I want you to deconstruct. But yeah, Silver, you are sad. Ah, uh, hungry. Sad wander on silver. Now oh, this is actually pretty bad. If there's a raid. Oh wait, silver can crawl now, no? How does that work? They start crawling and then a raider comes in. Hmm. Come on, silver. This will be a while. 
This will be a while. I think it can take up to a full day for this to, um, for this to end. So silver, hopefully there won't be a raid. It has been more than 11 days now. A bit more, yeah. Ah, she should go to sleep now. Oh my goodness, just as I said. A group of Idakin. They will prepare for a while. But this is pretty bad. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Because, well... Silver needs to... Come on, Silver. Oh, perfect. She went to bed. She went to bed, so we're fine. But now we need to deal with the raid. I believe I should get one more spike trap. Can I even afford that? Do I have enough time to, uh, to spare? I hope I have enough time for this. I do not have enough time. Well, just in case, I'm going to stand right here. He should take bleeding damage. Uh, chemical fascination, so... I don't think we can recruit him. Because we don't have drugs. Oh well, it is what it is. Oh, insta-dead. That is best case. Some Ida can, can tank like two spy uh, yeah two or three spike traps. Ida can do have the robust trait. But anyways, that is uh, quite a good second episode, 47 minutes. And in the next episode, we will get power up. Hopefully get some wanderers so we can recruit them. But so far so good. So far so good. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. And if you're bored, then watch this video next.